Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Ink, and today I wanted to make a video about something near and dear to my heart, Pokemon. Specifically, Pokemon Unite, which just recently came out for free on the Nintendo Switch. If you're unaware of what Pokemon Unite is, it is a MOBA, a multiplayer online battle arena, where two teams of players each pick a character that fulfills a certain role and has certain abilities, and then these two teams just go at it, fighting each other, trying to score points for their team. Whoever has the most points at the end wins. Now I've been playing a ton of this game over the past few days and I'm slowly on that grind to becoming a Pokemon master and for the most part I'm having a blast but there's one thing in particular that kind of bugs me a little bit and that is how they handled the original Kanto starter Pokemon. All three of the starters are in this game, Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise, and I'm really glad to see them all here, I'm really glad to see that representation, but if I could have my way with the game I would completely rework what these Pokemon do and what their roles are in the game. First up, let's talk Venusaur. In Unite, Venusaur is listed as an attacker type Pokemon. Now, attacker type Pokemon are Pokemon who typically have really high offensive skills and mobility at the trade off that they have low health and low defense. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering why the heck is Venusaur in a class of Pokemon that prioritizes mobility and gives up health and defense? Health and defense are two of what Venusaur is really good at, and speed typically is something that Venusaur is really bad at. Venusaur typically has a fairly decent special attack stat, so if you want to translate that over into Unite, then fine, I won't argue with that. But why did you put him into a class that prioritizes mobility and not what Venusaur is actually good at, especially when, get this, in Unite, Venusaur has bad mobility and low defense and low health. He only has the high attack stat. What is happening here? In a lot of tier list videos and articles online, I'm seeing a lot of people rating Venusaur as low mid tier or even worse, and it seems pretty apparent that that is because of the poor stat point allocation that they did here, because Venusaur's move set pool isn't bad at all, it's actually pretty decent. Venusaur starts with the moves Seed Bomb and Razor Leaf, which are both ranged area of effect abilities, and then from there he gets either Sludge Bomb or Giga Drain. Sludge Bomb is a damage over time ability and Giga Drain heals itself, and from there you can go into either Solar Beam, which is a really powerful ranged beam attack, or Petal Dance, which is an AoE around itself that actually speeds itself up a little bit. So that is one quick mobility buff that is actually a really good area denial ability too. So here's what I personally would do to change Venusaur. First of all, I would change him to a defender type character. Defenders prioritize health and defense and typically give up some combination of offense and mobility. As far as his stat point allocation goes, all you have to do is bring down his super high offense a little bit and then bring up his endurance a good bit. He should be able to take attacks way better than he can dish him out. That is not his job. Instead, he can use abilities like Gunk Shot and Petal Dance to deny areas to the opponent and limit their mobility, and then he can use moves like Giga Drain to heal himself, which is super important and super good to have on a defensive character like this. His ultimate even fulfills this role too. It deals damage to Pokemon in a wide area of effect and decreases their movement speed while they're in it. Solar Beam is really the only move he has that feels a little iffy for the defender role, but it is a scary area attack, so it can still also deny area to the opponent, so even that still feels okay. I really wouldn't change any of his moves, but making him a defender means we would have to tweak the numbers on the moves to maybe decrease damage a little bit and increase the area of effect in their debuffs. As far as comparing the Defender Venusaur to the other Defenders in the game, I think he would fill a really nice middle ground, having, say, less HP than Snorlax, but better ranged effects than Snorlax, having worse crowd control than Slowbro, but having better mobility, and so on. Now, technically in the traditional games, Venusaur's special attack and special defense are tied for his highest stats. So if you really wanted to fight me and say that Venusaur should be an all-rounder, I can concede to that, but personally, I would put him as Defender. But hey, that's just a theory. Okay. Next on the list is Charizard. Charizard. Look how they mess with my boy. In Unite, Charizard is an all-rounder. Officially, this class is for Pokemon that have decently high offense and defense and some limited mobility here and there, but really when you look at it in the game, it's kind of a dump class for characters that can do a variety of things that don't really fit into other classes. 
In Charizard's case, he has pretty decently high offense and decent endurance and mobility, so he really does fit the definition of all-arounder. Decent at everything, good at nothing. Now let's just take a quick look online and let's see what Charizard's base stats are normally like in traditional games. Oh, okay, look. Uh, higher attack, special attack, and speed than the other starters, and lower HP, defense, and special defense than the other starters. Hmm. Charizard typically prioritizes attack and speed and nothing else. And in the game, there is a class for that. It's called the attacker class. But no, let's not put Charizard there. Let's put him in the class where he has higher defense for no reason, so that now Charizard can't do anything because he's supposed to be good at everything, but not good at anything. Ugh. This all-rounder class is fine in general. In fact, the other three Pokemon in this class, Machamp, Lucario, and Garchomp, are all just fine, and they're pretty good in their own rights. But Charizard just isn't. His attack isn't high enough to do anything. His defense isn't high enough to survive anything. His mobility isn't high enough to go anywhere. He doesn't do anything well enough to be worth playing. And it's not just his stat pool that's bad. His overall kit really isn't very good either. Charizard's whole gimmick is that his basic attack deals more damage to Pokemon who are burned, and burned is a status effect that will slow Pokemon down and deal damage over time. So his whole kit is around burning Pokemon to do a little bit of this damage over time, and then using basic attacks to deal a lot of damage to them. A lot of Pokemon have these two hit combos or three hit combos, so in theory, this is fine. The problem is that when other Pokemon have these two or three hit combos, those combos either kill or get very close to killing, whereas Charizard's just doesn't. For example, Gardevoir, who just came out, has the move Psy Shock, which deals a huge amount of damage, but only in one very specific area. So if the Pokemon moves out of that area, you're not gonna get that damage off. So you need to supplement Psy Shock by using another ability, Moon Blast, which stuns a Pokemon. So you stun them, and then when they can't move, you hit them with this huge amount of damage in that one spot, and it, most of the time it's either going to kill or it's gonna get them very close to death. For Charizard, on the other hand, you want to use something like Flamethrower or Fire Blast to burn the Pokemon and then just spam it with basic attacks until it dies. The problem is, you're not going to deal damage to that Pokemon fast enough for it to not kill you first. Even though Charizard is supposed to have a higher than average defense because he's in the all-rounder class, he still can't take a hit. And if you don't get this burn combo off, you typically have a very low chance of winning a fair fight. His other abilities just aren't very good on their own either. Flamethrower is a ranged beam attack that has a slow startup and locks you in place. Fire Punch is a dash attack that will have you hit after moving a short distance, and it is a short distance and it has a lot of end lag on it. Fire Blast is going to hit one specific area and then deal damage over time in that area, and it does slow Pokemon down, but it's not very much damage and they can very easily just get out of it. And then his last move, Flare Blitz, is another dash attack that just has you move towards a Pokemon and then hit them really hard, but it doesn't hit them that hard and it's very hard to control. It's going to automatically try to move towards a Pokemon, so you can't use it to escape very well. Okay, enough complaining, let's talk about how to make him better. First of all, let's move Charizard over into the attacker position. Let's lower the defense, increase his attack, and increase his mobility. The whole burn gimmick I do think is a pretty neat idea, but we need to increase the damage output so that it becomes worth it to actually do it. So we're going to need to increase the damage from attacking a burned enemy, as well as increasing the damage of Flamethrower and Fire Blast, which burn the enemies. On top of that, we do also need to reduce the animation lag on Fire Blast and Flamethrower so that you're not such a sitting duck while you're trying to use them, especially after lowering Charizard's defense. We really also need to increase Charizard's mobility, so something like Fire Punch could stay, but then we do need to tweak it to make the dash go farther and faster, and also decrease the end lag on it. And then as for Fire Blitz, honestly, I would just scrap that one. I would prefer to have, like, fly or something like that. Something that just lifts Charizard up, increases his movement speed, and lets him just run around really quickly for a few seconds. Easy. And now finally for our third starter, let's talk about Blastoise. Blastoise. So here's the thing about Blastoise. Blastoise is in the game in the sense that he's in the game's code but he has not officially been released yet. He's been used in certain closed betas, like I think in certain mobile betas, but he's not actually in the full release of the game yet. 
That being said, I have some information about Blastoise and have seen some footage of him being used in the betas from like months ago, but I don't actually know what he looks like today or how he's going to be used today. What I do know is that he is going to be a ranged defender class with a handful of moves that stun. Taking a look at his moveset as it was in the beta, he starts off with Water Gun, which is a ranged attack that pushes opponents back and can also stun them if they get pushed back enough. And then that upgrades into either Hydro Pump, which is a stronger version of that, or Water Spout, which instead of stunning will just decrease the speed of Pokemon in the area. And then on special move slot two, he starts off with Skull Bash, which is a dashing ram attack that stuns the Pokemon, or you can turn that into Surf, which is another water attack that stuns Pokemon in the area, or you can instead get Rapid Spin, which it says it strengthens basic attacks and spraying moves, so it looks like it's just a buff. So all of these stunning crowd control moves mixed in with Blastoise's super hard shell, aka super high defense, makes for what looks like a really good solid tank. In fact, looking at Blastoise's stats, he has the highest special defense and physical defense of any of the starters, and he actually has the lowest attack and special attack of any of the starters, so yeah, Defender looks to be a perfect slot for him. But this is my video, and when I look at Blastoise, I don't see the shell first. I see the two giant cannons coming out of it. Sure, when you look stuff up online, he's got high numbers only in defense and special defense, but look in your heart and you can see Blastoise dealing tons of damage with those cannons. Now I'm not going to go so far as to say that Blastoise should be an attacker type Pokemon, but I do think he should be an all-arounder. He should have really nice attack and really nice defense to complement each other, as well as a bunch of crowd control moves that stun and deal lots of damage. When I look at the starters, Blastoise really is the one that speaks to me as an all-rounder, as the perfect complement of attack and defense, regardless of what Cerebi.net says. With all that said, I don't really think that there's much more that I could talk about with Blastoise since he isn't really out yet and I haven't gotten to play him. His kit looks really good and I'm really excited to play him. I just get the feeling I'm going to wish he dealt more damage. So yeah, those are my thoughts and opinions on the Kanto starters in Pokemon Unite. I am really glad to see them here. I just wish that I could tweak them a little. But enough about me. I would be super interested in knowing what you guys think about it. If you could make any change to any Pokemon in the game, let me know down in the comments and I would love to hear what other people are thinking about the game right now. And if you're interested in seeing any more Pokemon Unite content on the channel, please let me know by hitting that like button. Again, I am really liking this game and I'm trying to work my way up to become a Pokemon master and I would love to put out some more content if I can really grind through it and get good with certain characters. But that is all for me today. I do hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you all later.